video. When you look at Dream SMP for the first time and see this complicated mess of a story, most people will often briefly explain it down to a simple sentence of words. Explain it essentially being a, an adult being mad at a 16 year old or a grown adult screaming at a 16 year old. Pretty much breaking down the Tommy versus Dream vibe that the majority of the lore is built around right down to the very narrowest of its cringy bones. And of course with that simple analogy there you'd think Dream SMP would just be this cringe fest of boring storytelling and uninteresting things. But the moment you take a look at any deeper value of it you see this massive wealth of creativity, of ideas, beautifully written storytelling and so much more that I feel like no one really expresses their interest in the beautiful work that is put into the server. To the point where we're starting to see full length hour long videos just breaking down sections of the law, making Dream SMP more like a massive movie franchise. Complete comparison analogy between Hermitcraft and Dream SMP. Hermitcraft is like your favorite TV sitcom show. Where there is this big overlinking story, but it's something that goes on for an extraordinarily long time and it's always just about having fun with everybody. There will each season it starts all over again. We do pretty much the same as the last, but with a bit more detail, a bit of a difference, maybe a new Minecraft update and other things along those lines with some new people. But Dream SMP is a massive movie franchise where each story is interconnected with each other, but it is this massive wealth of detail and exploration and creativity that a lot of things just don't explore. One of the things that I want to point out that I feel like so many people dismiss when it comes to the Dream SMP is the builds. Now I know a lot of people like to compare the buildings and the styles of construction in the Dream SMP to stuff equivalent in the 2B2B server. And to be completely honest, you're not that wrong there, not only by its looks, but by the purpose of why these things are built. See, a majority of things built in the Dream SMP server is built with the idea in mind that it might potentially get destroyed in a future war later on. There's a reason why if you go towards all the buildings and stuff that was built before the law becoming an integral part of the server before Tommy joins, you see that the wealth of detail and the love and creativity that was put into the builds was far heavier in comparison to what they are now. Which also explains the same reason why builds built before the law and before Tommy joined barely ever get involved in destruction and fires and things on those law, aside from the community house which was used as a very key point in a certain story structure in the law. I wouldn't be too surprised to see that a majority of of people in this server do have the creativity to build some amazing beautiful structures in Minecraft but don't just due to the fact that it's all expected to have a chance of being destroyed aside from a few key exceptions. One of them being Technoblade's house over in the snow biome. That's built with a whole lot more detail and ideas and just structure behind it in comparison to what Lemanberg's second structure was ever built as. Mainly because at this point in time Technoblade's house out in the snow biome is not planned for an actual destruction event in a war. Us Lemanberg Part 2 was planned to inevitably be destroyed when everything went wrong. I feel like having that understanding behind the builds and why they're built the way they are, they're built with some amount of effort in mind but enough that it doesn't seem like it's a massive waste of time when it eventually gets destroyed. Because of course you don't want to build something that you know that's going to get destroyed and put a whole lot of time, several hours of grinding for resources and things along those lines with the knowledge that it's just going to get destroyed in the end. Hence the reason why a lot of the more beautiful and prettier builds in the server tend to be further away from the main area of the server nowadays because it's just easier to keep away from the mess that is the lore. But looking at the builds in that form of way, it's still surprising the level of ideas and creativity that still goes into building structures in the world that is intended to be destroyed. For example, the second version of Lemanberg after Wilbur set off the bombs and got killed after the Pogtopia versus Lambert Mamanberg war. Instead of filling up all the craters and holes left over from the TNT explosions, they built these beautiful balconies and walkways around these massive craters, making use of the craters in a more integral way to the actual build and the design of the area that a lot of people just don't seem to notice too much about it. But enough about that, let's go a little bit more in detail about the lore and the structure and creativity and everything behind it. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, most people who are onlookers who don't actually know too much about it might look at this server and think that the lore is an entirely 
cringe fest of uninteresting, boring ideas and things that are really stupid and uncreative. But when you go down to the nitty gritty of the details, the love and the creativity that has been put behind into the lore via Wilbur, Tommy, Techno, Dream, everyone who gets involved with constructing either their characters or stories behind their characters, you can see the level of love and attention that everyone puts into making the lore of what the lore is. And whilst yes, it is very difficult to get into the story and get into the lore if you are only joining on most recent times, but once you are able to catch up, which is definitely possible if you do take some shortcuttings around understanding the story, you learn to appreciate what happens so much more and you also understand why each and every massive lore stream is so anticipated for what it is. Why you'll see things trend on Twitter all the goddamn time despite how annoying it really is to see it trend all the damn time. Because each major lore stream is a massive event, it's something big because something massive to the story is about to occur that you don't know what's going to happen precisely. Who will survive? Is someone going to die? Is some massive secret about to be revealed? And so many beautiful things along those lines. Dream SMP being not a normal SMP and not taking full advantage of all quotas of an SMP server gets to relay all of this creativity and these ideas and these beautiful time and effort works into designing an integral, beautiful, well-constructed story and lore behind the server itself that allows people, even like me, an adult, actually thoroughly enjoy the story and the ideas that are expressed behind it. Whilst I prefer not to watch via Tommy's point of view because that is a bit of an annoyance with him half the time, the story itself with him and Dream and everyone in there is definitely well built and well structured. Dream SMP and Hermitcraft are both the front runners leaders of the Minecraft server area, both being extraordinarily popular in their own area of Minecraft on YouTube. And I personally feel like that we all should be able to sit here and appreciate both servers for what they are, the creativity, the effort and the work that goes in behind them. Whether it be for a very integral, complicated but detailedly magnificent story or whether it be just a beautiful beautiful world that you want to explore after the server is said and done. As I said, this is a video following the same footsteps as a video I made a while back called Why Hermitcraft is Better Than the Dream SMP. That video is more to talk about why I believe Hermitcraft is so good and why it's going to outlast a majority of SMP servers popular right now. But again, there was never any means to actually tear down on the Dream SMP or any other server for that matter, as that video serves more as a joy and why Hermitcraft is so good in my eyes as I believe it is. Which is the exact same reason why this video here that you're watching here exists as it serves to serve the exact same purpose but to express how good I believe the Dream SMP is. This video was intended to be released far sooner than what it did, so I'm, to everybody who thought that I was out here trying to eagerly hate on the Dream SMP, I'm sorry. I was never the point. This video was meant to come around a week after the last one, but some things happened and it got delayed and just stuff on those lines. Either way, I hope you did enjoy. I've been your host, Chris Am. I highly appreciate it if you do hit the subscribe button down below as it really helps me out. And until next time, guys, goodbye.